Come, let us worship the Lord and glorify his name. Let us sing his praise and declare his glory in all the earth. For God has done great things and is worthy to be praised. Oh, my friends, I welcome you today. I am the Reverend Dr. Redonia Thomas, the pastor of Bethlehem and Laurel Creek United Methodist Church. We are one church in two locations serving the community of Greenville, South Carolina. I do have a powerful word from the Lord for you today. So I invite you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12. I will be reading verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Hear these words from the word of God. Therefore, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin, say and the sin, that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Say thanks be to God. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we do thank you for your word today. God, we need a word from you. These are troubled, troubled times and people are hurting. God, I pray that you will speak a word to the hearts of those that are, are just in such deep, dark depression today, Lord, because of the injustice that surrounds your people. Let them know that you're still God and you're still on the throne. Speak a word to them individually. Speak a word to, to us collectively. Oh God, I yield, Holy Spirit. I yield to you. Speak through me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have chosen for a title today, hashtag run on anyhow, run on anyhow. Did you ever think about being a Christian? Did you ever think that being a Christian would be easy? Did you ever think, think about it? Once you gave your life to Christ, it would be easy. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you today, it's not. This Christian journey is not easy. It requires, it, it, it requ requires endurance. It requires strength. It requires stamina that calls for you to press on in faith when things get difficult. And these are especially difficult days. But you started out with God. Stay with God. Keep looking to Jesus and finish the course. Our text begins with therefore. Therefore, because the writer took us on a field trip through the historical hall of faith. We learn about great men and women who suffered and struggled, who faced great trials and tribulation, but they lived a faithful life. We see Noah by faith who, who walked by faith to build an ark and save his people from the flood. We see Abraham who answered the call to leave his home, to go to a place he did not know. Moses, by faith, led the Hebrews through the Red Sea. Joseph, by faith, spoke of an exodus from Egypt for his people 
And he even gave them instructions concerning his bones. Sarah, by faith, had a son when she was thought to be barren at the age of 90. David, by faith, killed a giant, Goliath. By faith, Rahab, a prostitute, hid the spies and was not killed when Israel invaded their land. They all went through something. They all suffered, but they held on to their faith, believing in the promises of God. My friends, these were not ordinary. These were not just ordinary people. They were people just like us, but they were filled with faith. The Bible speaks of a great cloud of witnesses. Who are they? They are people just like us, men and women of faith, people who, just like you and me, have gone on before us to be with the Lord. The writer wants to encourage us to keep the faith, to hang in there and not give up during the challenges of life and difficult days. You know, when we think back 25, 30 40 years ago, we will remember how our people struggled, how they went through, they endured hardship just to put food on the table, just to keep a, a steady job facing all the obstacles of injustice. But they walked in faith. Life wasn't easy. Life for Jesus was not easy, but the writer says that he pioneered the way of faith. Jesus led the way and it went all the way to the cross. My friends, our faith hero and heroine did not always have a car or a job, but they made it to church. If they had to walk, they didn't always have suits and nice dresses and clothes, hats, and all of those pretty things that we put on today, but they made it to church. And when they got there, they praised God anyhow. My friends, they didn't always have money. We have so much money now. They didn't always have money, but they paid tithes and offerings. They gave into the ministry. They battled discouragement. They battled disappointments and, and oppression and depression. They struggled against systemic racism, attacks, and setbacks, but they fought the good fight of faith. Staying committed, looking to God, and the Bible tells us that they are the witnesses, these are the witnesses that surround us, cheering us on to run this race against all odds. Run on, my friends, against suffering and shame. Run on against depression and oppression. Run on against structural in inequities and racism, when the president cannot be trusted, when your neighbor is filled with hatred, when the system is oppressing the people and, and those others are marching in the streets with automatic weapons. Huh. That great cloud of witnesses are cheering us on to keep the faith and finish the course. Along with Jesus, those witnesses are our examples. They were our inspiration. I believe our Hebrew writer has reached out to us today saying finishing is everything. Hashtag my friend, finishing is everything. Somebody ought to write it in the chat. You see, you and I have got a race to run and we've got to run it by faith. 
in this life of stresses and distresses, my question is, how do we get to the finish line by faith? How do we reach the finish line? I say, how? How, my friends, do we get to the finish line by faith? Hashtag, put off the weight and the sin. Put off the weight and the sin. Martin Luther King says, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. He said, truth might be crucified and justice buried, but one day they will rise again. Did you hear me? Truth might be crucified. Justice might be buried, but one day they will rise again. We must live and face death with that hope, said Martin Luther King. So my friends, put off the weight. All of this is just weight and the sin. Don't pick up hatred. Don't pick up evil. Don't pick up vengeance. It's all weight. And my friends, don't pick up sin. The word cloud of witnesses and sin in Greek are similar. These words both mean around us. The great cloud of witnesses that are all around us. But so is sin. When you turn to the right, you see witnesses and you see sin. When you turn to the left, you see witnesses this cloud of witnesses, and you see sin. They are both around us. Sometimes we get it twisted and we think our race is against each other. But my friend, our race is a struggle against sin. Sin is all around us and it's easy to pick it up. It's easy to get involved in sin, to do evil to others who are doing it to you. Sin is a setback spiritually. We value God in our minds, but hardly at all in our daily life. We see it every day. Uh, there's an old saying about people speaking out of both sides of their mouth. They talking about God and yet sin fills their life. But James reminds us that bitter water does not come from a sweet fountain or a sweet fountain does not give out bitter water. So sin holds us and it keeps us from running the race of faith. It keeps us from running swiftly. It's like dragging an old ball and chain. If we would throw off the sin, we could grow. We could go much faster spiritually. But too often we don't take sin seriously enough to do anything about it. We let it hang on and hang around and we continue to run at a loser's pace. The Bible said some of us ought to be teachers by now and yet we are still babies in Christ on milk instead of meat. What is that weight? that has put a wedge between you and your faith? What is that sin, that weight, that has put a wedge between you and your God? Oh, glory be to God. Sin has no power over us because there's a Holy Spirit that lives in us who is all power. So my friends, you have the power to throw off the weight and the sin. Second, how do we get to that finish line? The second thing is you've got to run with perseverance. You've got to run and don't give up. You've got to run and don't give in. Run and don't stop. We all have a race to run and endurance is what separates the followers and the admirers. Yes, some are followers and some are sitting on the sideline just admiring Jesus. 
Yes, my friends, this Christian life is not a cakewalk. It is a constant struggle against this, this world, against sin. It's a constant struggle against the weight of this world. It is easy to start. So many have started out with Jesus and they fizzle out because of distractions, because of worries, cares, and hard times. But my friends, let me make it clear. The reward is in finishing. So don't quit. Don't give up. Do you remember the story about the tortoise and the hare? Well, don't be like the rabbit who got distracted and lost the race. In your spiritual journey, things in life can become distractions, jobs, relationships, anger and hatred, jealousy, just things in general can get you off course if you let it. Sometimes you get overwhelmed and you want to give up. You want to throw in the towel and quit. When you started out with Jesus, you thought troubles will all be over like the song says, but then the devil decided to step in to shake, rattle, and roll you, and your troubles had just begun. Perseverance means endure through the good times and the bad times. It means never giving up on God because God never gave up on you, and he never will. People will let you down, The system will let you down, just like with Breonna Taylor this week. Many of us feel that the system has let us down. Our government will let us down. Family, let's bring it on home. Family will let you down. Members in your church sometime will let you down. But Jesus, oh my friends, Jesus will never let you down. Perseverance means keeping the faith in joy and in times of sorrow. Keep the faith when your journey is hard. Keep the faith when your money is funny and your friends are few. It means believe God at all costs. Remember to run on anyhow. Finally, my friends, type in the chat, somebody. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. We must look to Jesus who is the pioneer, the one who went before us. The commentary compares it to when the children of Israel sinned in the wilderness and God had Moses to lift up the bronze serpent pole for the people to look upon, believe and live. This is what they had to say. So look to Jesus, believe and live. He suffered much more much more shame than we ever will. But he stayed the course and he finished the race. He ran on anyhow, all the way to the cross. He endured all the suffering, all the shame and death on the cross. But on the third day, oh, hallelujah, he rose again, defeating death, hell, and the grave. As we run this Christian race, my friends, keep your eyes on Jesus. He knows all about you. And though you stumble, oh my gosh, the Lord will pick you up and and you can keep on running. When you get thirsty, look to Jesus. He will give you water, living water, and you'll never thirst again. When you get hungry, look to Jesus. He is the bread of life. And in your race, when you lose your way, Jesus will find you. He will set your feet back on right paths. When you get worried in this race, look to Jesus. He is the God of peace and he can calm every troubled storm. When you get weary in this race, look to Jesus. He will be your strength. When you get sick, look to Jesus, for by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. When you are lonely, look to Jesus. He promises never to leave you or forsake you. My friends, with Jesus, you can run on and fight the good fight of faith. So run on church through trial and tribulation, through suffering and shame, 
through oppression and injustice, through evil and hatred. Run on anyhow, because when you look to Jesus, you can finish the course. You are going to find this life of faith challenging, struggles on every hand. But part of what keeps us going is that great cloud of witnesses. Many have left their mark upon us by their very character and their undying faith in the midst of maltreatment and injustice. We must throw off the weight and the sin, run and not quit, and keep looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. There is a generation behind us that's watching how we run this race of faith. Let's fight a good fight, keep the faith and finish the course. My friends, because finishing is everything, so run on anyhow, amen? Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Andre Crouch, many years ago, he sang a song. He wrote a song and he sang it. He said, I've, I've had many tears and sorrow. He said, I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong, but in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. He said, I've been a lot of places and I've seen a lot of faces. There have been times I felt so all alone. But in my lonely hours, yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus lets me know that I am his own. He said, I thank God for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the storms he brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I'd never know that God could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God could do. Through it all, through it all, he said, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon his word. And I pray that you will too, my friends. Amen, amen. Now, I don't know if you know this God I'm preaching about, but I want you to know that he knows you and he died for you. If you will accept him and receive him today, believe on him in your heart, open your mouth, confess your sins, ask him to forgive you. He is ready and he is able. He will not turn away. He will change your life for the better. My friend, there's too much going on in this world today for you to go it alone, for you to go without God. You need this great God leading and guiding your life today. Reach out to him. He is waiting for you and he's reaching out to you. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Father, we thank you for your word, but, but things are difficult right now. We're in a difficult season, a difficult day. People are hurting like they've never hurt before. Comfort your people, oh God. Give us strength to run this race against all the odds. Because we know that if you be for us, who in this world can be against us? We might not see justice in this lifetime, oh God, like Martin Luther King said. The truth that has been crucified and justice that has been buried will one day rise again. We believe it, oh God. We trust you for it. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Call it done. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Please feel free to join us every Sunday at 1045. God bless you and God keep you.